Look at her, what's she up to? She wants to get married. And you're probably still planning on going somewhere else, aren't you? Mrs. Glory was indignant, scolding her daughter for not sleeping at home again. I think you've forgotten that you have a child to feed and care for. Let me remind you. Don't even think of marrying a rich man. You have a child, you'll live like everyone else. I won't let you put this burden on me and Beth. It's enough that I've saved you the shame of the neighborhood. And here's what she has planned. She's trying to leave us. No, darling, that won't work on you. I'll die, but I won't allow this marriage. Kate listened silently to her mother's eloquence. It was absolutely pointless to argue with the woman, and she knew it as well as anyone. Glory was a strict woman. They usually say about people like her that she's old-fashioned. She tolerated no compromise, always insisted on her own, and forced everyone around her to live by her orders. Her older sister, Beth, was always an obedient daughter, but Kate resisted her mother's pressure with difficulty. Even as a teenager, the girl realized that she would never find mutual understanding with her. Glory did her best to scold her naughty daughter, but Kate missed all the lectures by her ears. You'd rather help your sister than hang around with your friends, Glory grumbled disgruntledly. When Kate came home from school in the evening, you're always hanging around some girlfriend, and the house is a mess. The floors aren't washed, the dishes are dirty. Why does Beth have to do everything for everyone? Don't you live here? But what are you for? said Kate, who had never seen her colleagues doing anything around the house. By the way, I'm preparing for exams. In two years I'm going to university, I don't have time for dishes, you know. And I'm working, my child, retorted Glory, who was deeply offended by her daughter's words. I'm the only one who pulls you down my throat, especially you. Beth at least went to work and feeds herself. And you, it will be many years before you start feeding yourself. So shut your mouth and don't you dare to treat me badly. I'm your mother and you should have a little respect for me. Watching the bickering between mother and daughter, Beth realized she was behaving correctly. She never argued with Glory and generally lived the way she liked. The girl found her studies difficult, so as soon as she got her diploma, she finished secretarial courses and took a job. Unlike Kate, Beth considered it a shame to stand on her mother's neck. In her twenties, she never dated anyone, spent every weekend at home and always helped her mother. Sometimes Beth didn't have enough energy and time for everything but Kate didn't even think about helping her sister. The girl was always very jealous of her mother. It seemed to her that Glory loved Beth more than her. In part, she did. When the woman got married, she planned to become a mother only once. Her husband, Kate and Beth's father, who had died a few years ago, had never insisted that their family have many children. In general, he wasn't very interested in the question of continuing the family. The man was quite comfortable living with his wife, with whom he got on well. The second pregnancy came unexpectedly, but Glory couldn't even afford the thought of getting rid of the child. Since it happened, it is necessary to give birth, and further already somehow they will manage. It cannot be said that she did not love her youngest daughter at all. The woman's emotional state was greatly affected by the loss of her husband. She didn't expect him to pass away so soon and eventually hoped that he would still manage to beat the incurable disease. But fate decided otherwise. Glory lost her closest loved one and was left alone with two daughters who still had to grow up before she could help her mother in any way. The poor woman didn't even have time to mourn her lost husband. Work, work, and more work, to hell with this miserable job, she sometimes thought to herself. But then she remembered that she had to get her daughters back on their feet and put such thoughts aside. Of course, Glory was very offended that her youngest daughter didn't pay any attention to her, behaved disgustingly, rudely and argued with her. Therefore, from the outside it seemed that the woman loved Beth more. But, in fact, it was not like that at all. When Kate, at the age of 16, got pregnant, the woman couldn't find her place. Who? Who did it? Who is this bastard who dared to abuse you, a minor? Asked Glory, who, despite all her intolerant attitude towards Kate, was sure that her daughter, herself, could not have done it. The girl even seriously considered lying to her mother and appearing an innocent victim but as a result she decided to tell her the whole truth, which she saw no point in hiding. Kate got pregnant by her classmate Larry, who they had dated for the past two years. Her mother had no idea her daughter had fallen in love with a young man so early. Of course, if she had known, she would have taken action. But when it happened, it was already too late. Did you tell her about the pregnancy? The woman asked. How does he feel about it? How could he feel about it, mother? Kate cried. At least my parents won't find out, otherwise I'll get fucked up. 
Larry's parents are strict. He proposed to solve the problem somehow. He said he'd steal money from his father so I could go to the clinic. No, what's wrong with you? exclaimed Glory, who was adamantly against such maneuvers. How can that be? He's a child, a living being. Under no circumstances should you get rid of the child. I won't allow it. Kate didn't know what would be best. She was definitely not ready to become a mother, but she was afraid to terminate the pregnancy. But what if later, when she wanted to have children, she would not be able to? The girl had heard repeatedly that many women faced similar problems. She had no choice but to agree to go to a remote village, to Laria's grandmother, with whom she still kept in touch occasionally, you'll live there, in the fresh air, she said, and when the time comes to give birth, you'll come back. At school we'll say you urgently need long-term treatment. I know a doctor who will write the necessary certificates. I'll deal with her. And about childbirth and the future child, I have an idea. Kate was shocked. How could my mother suddenly have so many connections, money and opportunities? She thought. She pays the doctor, she pays the maternity, she gives money to the grandmother to support her pregnant daughter, and every time she pretends to be a beggar. To give her daughter complete privacy and to hide the fact that she had given birth to a child, Glory spent all her savings. The woman lived by the old concepts that were firmly in her head and was convinced that pregnancy at such an age is a stigma and a shame, I'd rather give everything I have than have my daughter pointed out to me, she thought, realizing that she would not only have to negotiate with the doctors, but also have a serious talk with Beth. When the girl heard what her mother was proposing, she was almost speechless, you're going to shame Kate, and you want to shame me? Beth was indignant. Well, thank you, mother. I didn't expect this from you. Beth, like her mother, had very strict opinions, so she couldn't afford to become a mother in front of all honest people without being officially married. Have you thought about what the neighbors will say about me? exclaimed the girl. What about the people I know? Friends? As if their opinion would really interest anyone. But Beth was convinced that both she and her mother would surely be asked unpleasant questions that would burn with shame. At least you're an adult, her mother persuaded the girl. We'll find something to answer. Your boss could have gotten you pregnant. But what will they say about Kate? Besides, her pregnancy will bring a lot of trouble into the family. I'm the one who lost sight of her daughter. Beth, you have to help me. I'm asking you very much. You're my only hope. With a squeak in her soul, Beth agreed, already imagining how she would have to hide her eyes in shame when someone asked her when and from whom she got her belly. On the due date, Kate returned from the village where she had lived for nine months before giving birth, and at night Glory took her daughter to the maternity ward, where a doctor she knew admitted her to a separate room. It's too early, he said. She'll have to lie down for a few days. Okay, no problem, Glory replied. When everything happens, please let me know. The woman had paid a lot of money for such confidentiality, which allowed her to hope that everything would go well. The doctor, as promised, called a few days later. And Glory, together with Beth, who had been walking around with a false belly all this time, went to the hospital, well, that's it. A wonderful and healthy baby was born, said the doctor, coming out of the ward. Our young mother is also doing well. In a few days she can be discharged. When my mother took Kate out of the hospital, all the documents had already been drawn up. Officially, the girl had nothing to do with the child, but in fact she had to keep her word to her mother, finish school, find a job and support the child. Two years flew by. Reluctantly and with no hope of getting into university, Kate finished school anyway, and then found a job in a clothes shop. The girl was lucky, and it was no ordinary shop, but a good boutique where respectable customers bought clothes and got a decent wage. Seeing how her daughter's life was going, Glory was very happy, and you wanted to go to university, said the woman, and what would you have done there? Would you have stayed there for five years and wiped your pants? But here you are, working, bringing money into the house. It's good, isn't it? Kate didn't see any good in it. The girl realized that she could have worked at a job like that when she was young, but then what? Lack of higher education is a road to nowhere. Beth wasn't too happy with her life either. All she could do was blame her sister for being left with a belly, and now she had to replace the child's mother, who was too busy at work. After her so-called maternity leave, Beth never returned to her former job no one was going to wait for her. Immediately after the birth of her daughter she had to resign, and caring for the baby, to whom Kate paid almost no attention because she was either studying or working, took up all Beth's time. She was also unable to find a job. She simply didn't have time for it. And Kate, 
she didn't expect to have to live like this all her life. Not even the next 15 years, until the child grew up and got back on its feet, working non-stop, no days off, was in her plans. The girl wanted a bright and full life, full of interesting impressions and, of course, love. She didn't even remember Larry. When she returned from the village, and Joey was born, the young man was already studying at another school. Why his parents suddenly decided to transfer him on the eve of graduation, Kate didn't know. And the girl didn't care. The relationship with Larry was juvenile nonsense, and the more mature Kate became, the more she became convinced of it. The birth of a child made her grow up a lot, become responsible and rational, begin to look at things soberly and realistically and treat life properly. The meeting with Fred became truly fatal for her. And although they belonged to completely different social classes, the young people had a lot of common interests. Unlike Kate, Fred grew up in luxury and prosperity. The young man's parents were local businessmen and owned a network of jewelry stores. He studied at the institute, went to parties and discos and at the same time infiltrated his father's business, already owning part of his father's capital, which the man transferred to his son as soon as he came of age. Any girl would dream of such a young man, and Kate was no exception. She was convinced that it was not for nothing that he went shopping on the day she was on duty. While the young man tried on a few items, the girl entertained him as best she could. She joked merrily, told funny stories and gave him advice on his choice of clothes. Kate had an impeccable sense of style and could have become a fashion designer or a designer if she hadn't given birth to a child. She was very cold to her son, thinking it was his fault that he had to work instead of enjoying life like all her peers. Wouldn't you be against it if we were to talk, say, in an informal atmosphere? Asked Fred, after he had picked out all the necessary items and paid for the groceries at the cash register. Of course not replied Kate, who was madly delighted that the young man was paying attention to her. Every day, various young men and women appeared in the shop. They were all rich, but it was Fred who caught her attention. Kate herself didn't understand what it was that attracted her attention so much. Was it the simplicity and directness, which was not typical of people of her social status? Or the kindness and openness he exuded even when he was quiet and serious? Kate longed to get to know the young man better, to communicate with him alone. For his sake, she risked breaking store rules by writing her phone number on the back of her check. If her boss had known this, he would have fired her immediately. Informal communication with customers and the exchange of personal contacts were strictly forbidden, and this was written into the contract. But Kate didn't care. He called her that evening, when she had already returned from work and collapsed exhausted on the bed in her room. Beth, as always, was playing with the baby, which was totally uninteresting to Kate. She always closed the door to her sister's room so that the child's cries would not disturb her sleep and she could do her own chores. After work, Kate wanted only one thing, to rest, and she felt she had every right to do so. The girl tried to talk on the phone as quietly as possible so that, God forbid, Fred wouldn't hear Joey's screams, which were sometimes so loud that even a closed door wouldn't help. But, fortunately, everything went well, and until the moment Kate received a marriage proposal from this young man, he did not know that in the girl's family there is a child, and this child is her son. Kate was really happy that Fred's parents accepted her. She was so afraid that the young man's father and mother would categorically oppose her son's marriage to a saleswoman that at first she even refused to go to dinner. Well, what are you thinking of all this nonsense and making trouble in an empty seat? Fred marveled. My father and mother are normal people. They have never been smug about money and they treat ordinary people as well as rich people and who I marry, they don't care at all. The main thing is to study and work, and the rest is completely unimportant. Fred's parents were really quite loyal people and never interfered in their son's private life. They considered this a waste of time. And Christina and Alex, were convinced that no matter how much they didn't instruct the child, he would do everything in his own way. So from childhood they gave Fred freedom of choice. They treated Kate with kindness, if their son chose this girl, it means that he found in her something he didn't find in others, said Alex. When dinner was over and Fred went to take the girl home, I think we'll have a simple and modest wedding, as young people want. They said themselves that they are categorically against grandiose celebrations. Christina, who used to agree with her husband in everything, only nodded in response, listening to his reasoning. In their time, they had managed to get on their feet and accomplish everything together, so it was hard for her to judge her son's future marriage where the bride and groom belong to different social strata. I think if they start living on their own right away, the woman reasoned, having their own house and family, their marriage will be successful. 
In this way, she made it clear to her husband that she was not against newlyweds moving into their own home. Alex shared his wife's position. The man also felt that the newlyweds should live separately, so the very next day after dinner he started looking for an apartment for the future family. Dad, that would be just wonderful, Fred exclaimed when he heard about the wedding gift. I'll return every penny, don't worry. You don't have to return anything, son, the man laughed. The gift is called a gift. I'll buy you a small apartment and then you'll be on your own. Alex saw a huge potential in his son and was very happy, seeing the young man plunge into the family business. He was sure that, in a few years, Fred would be able to afford to buy his family a spacious apartment, a huge house and everything that only the soul could desire. For Kate, Fred was a real catch. No one had ever taken such good care of her before, and every day she fell more and more in love with him. Behind the veil of sentiment, she had completely forgotten her mother, her sister and her son. But Glory reminded her daughter of her obligations. Kate, I have to talk to you seriously, said the woman, when her daughter informed her that she was going to introduce her mother and sister to her future husband. The girl didn't want to do it. Kate realized that Beth and Glory could tell Fred about her youthful sin. This would be very unpleasant. The girl herself wanted to talk to both Beth and herself before inviting Fred into the house. But her mother beat her to it. And how do you imagine your future life? How will you deal with the baby? Kate was confused and didn't know what to say to her mother. Taking the child to a new family was not in her plans. And to turn her dirty laundry inside out in front of Fred, Kate also had absolutely no desire. What was, was and has long been in the past. Officially, Joey is Beth's son. Let her raise him, educate him. This was not my idea, said Kate, sharing her thoughts on the matter with her mother. You were the one who said that when the child is born, Beth will officially be his mother. And you gave a lot of money to the doctors. I'm not going to embarrass myself in front of the man I love, so if you can't keep your tongue behind your teeth, tell me right now and I won't invite Fred to our house anymore. I was only missing the problems with the upcoming wedding. There you go, exclaimed Glory indignantly, you don't need problems before the wedding. But it's nothing that we, together with Beth, are already solving your problems for the fourth year in a row? By the way, your own sister lost her job. And all because of your charity, she was covered with shame, both in the eyes of neighbors and our mutual friends. Mother, please. What shame is this? Kate smiled. You're living in medieval times. Nobody cares who gives birth to whom, so I don't understand what great shame we're talking about. So, the neighbors have asked you several times where the baby came from. You answered and moved on. And generally, you could have answered nothing to anyone. What do you care what people you meet at best a few times a year in front of the block think? Beth felt very painfully the unsolicited attention of the neighbors towards her and the child and repeatedly spoke to her mother about it. Glory did her best to keep quiet, but Beth's dissatisfaction gradually grew, and when she found out that Kate was planning to get married, she couldn't stay away any longer. I won't keep quiet either, she interjected in the conversation, after hearing the arguments between mother and daughter, if Fred comes to meet us. I will tell him everything as it is. Kate panicked. The girl realized that she would not be able to explain to the young man why she had suddenly changed her mind about introducing him to her mother and sister. She had to somehow sort out the situation and make up with the family. Okay, said Kate, let's make a deal. What do you want me to do? Take your son into your family, Beth answered. What else should we want? Maybe I intend to rebuild my life too. But who needs me with a child? And yet with someone else's. He's your child, Kate, and we didn't agree that I'd raise him all my life. As far as I remember, that's exactly what we agreed, said Kate, remembering her mother's words. Didn't we? When you, my mother, started all this, you said that Beth would be Joey's official mother. Is it possible to be an official mother for a while? This is the first time I've heard of such a thing. Stop arguing. Said Glory sharply. You can invite your Fred. I promise there won't be any arguments at dinner. And you, Beth, must promise to behave yourself. And what happens next, Kate, depends only on you and your behavior. If you behave properly, everything will be all right. And if not, as they say, get what you deserve. Kate couldn't even imagine what her mother had in mind. When Glory had said she wouldn't make a fuss at dinner, she was only referring to the fact that she wouldn't talk to Fred during the get to know you. But here it is after, don't worry, the woman hurried to reassure Beth, I'll tell her everything. Glory could no longer tear herself between her two daughters, in front of whom she felt guilty. She had convinced Kate to give birth to a child she didn't want and didn't need, 
and Beth to raise someone else's child, pushing her own life and achievements into the background. She couldn't go on like this, and Glory realized this. When the evening ended and Fred was about to leave, the woman called him to her. At that moment, Kate went to her room to change her clothes. That evening, she was not going to stay at home, but wanted to go to Fred's, and her mother had not been able to forbid her anything for a long time. The girl had missed the moment when Glory and her fiancé were alone. And, returning from the room, she was shocked to hear their conversation, damn, the girl said to herself, when she heard fragments of sentences coming from the kitchen, she finally told him. How could he? He promised me he wouldn't. Well, mother, hang on. I'll show you. Kate expected anything from Fred and was very surprised when the young man politely said goodbye to Glory and Beth, took her hand and said, let's go home. All the way home, he didn't say a word. Only when they entered the house and sat down to drink tea, he looked her in the eye and asked, Why didn't you tell me about the baby? Why do I have to find out about him from your mother? Kate couldn't think of an immediate answer. She was afraid that any word she said would be against her. It was only after a few minutes that the girl found the strength to explain herself to her lover. I was afraid you wouldn't understand, she whispered through her tears. And that you would think me the last. Well, you know what I mean. What nonsense! Fred exclaimed. In life, anything can happen. A child, even a stranger, can't be a burden. Children are gifts of destiny. As planned, Fred and Kate got married. Not even the wedding was postponed because of such a minor problem. Immediately after the celebration, Joey was taken to a new apartment given by his parents, and a few years later, when Fred finally got back on his feet, they moved to a big house, where another son was born. Beth found a job and rebuilt her personal life and stopped blaming her sister. Together they helped their mother. And Glory was overjoyed when she looked at her daughters, who had managed to restore relations after so many years of mutual antipathy and rivalry. Dear all, thank you so much for listening, and if you enjoyed the story, then please feel free to support me with a like and leave your thoughts in the comments. You can also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss the new stories. See you soon. Bye.